Joining me tonight, I'm pleased to say, are Sky News contributors Gemma Tonini and Prue McSween. Uh, evening to you both. I G'day, want to start mate. with flags, if you don't mind. Can we start with flags? Now, I know this will sure. come as a great surprise to both, both of you. When I was young, I went to school. I know I don't often show <laughs> that, but I went to school and we had a flagpole. And every day in the start of school, in primary school, we sang the national anthem, Prue, and they pulled out the Australian flag, up the pole it went, and we then went into class. Uh, we now have supermarket giants like Woolworths saying we need three flags. Now, I'll get both you and Gemma's view on this, but in my view, overall, we should have one flag, the national Australian flag, and that's all we need. If we want to have a debate about what it looks like, if we want to have a debate about whether uh, the Indigenous flag is better than the current Australian flag or the Torres Strait Islander flag, fine. Let's have another referendum. And I suspect I could tell you what the result would be. But, Prue, I mean, why does Woolworths continue this sort of woke lecturing of us all the time? Who knows, Steve? It's astounding, isn't it? All this flag waving, whether it be this flag saga or the fact that they've decided not to sell the merchandise. You know, they're ignoring and thumbing their noses at Aussies who've been given a very resounding opinion at, with the re voice uh, result that they just want no division. They just want to get on with life and, you know, share the incredible country that we have. And, you, you know, you've got Woolworths trying to paint itself as the, you know, producer's friend and the consumer's friend. Well, they thumb their noses at us. And I 100% agree with you. We need just one national flag. And this is the flag that men and women fought under. And we should all be saluting and, and very proud of. And it just really irritates me that this virtual signal, signalling, this flag waving by Woolworths is doing them no good and I, for one, don't shop there anymore. Gemma, I mean, you, you travel around Europe, you've got European uh, heritage. I mean, you go to France, you go to Italy, you go to the UK or wherever you want to go. Yes, uh, not in the UK anymore, but in the <laughs> EU countries, you might have the EU flag and the national flag. But what is it that we need three different flags? I and mean, in some councils, for God's sake, down in Melbourne, in inner city Melbourne, have got more than three flags. Can't we just settle on a flag and, and get behind it? Well, of course we can, and we don't need three flags. And I think this is symptomatic of a deeper malaise. And it's like you've been inside my head, Pricey, because I write about this um, in part, at least, in my weekend column in Tomorrow's Australian. It's all about this kind of issue, though I don't reference flags specifically. But what is it? What is it? What is next for Australia? And I think that's the deeper question here. What we're talking about is a symptom of a deeper problem, and that's this sort of lost identity, a little bit of self-loathing, I would. So I saw an interview, a doorstop with a, a young girl, a vox pop rather, with a young girl the other day about Australia Day and she looked down the camera and with the greatest of sin sincerity said, oh, no, it's all about genocide. And, you know, I looked at her and I thought nobody stopped. The, the journalist didn't stop and say, can you explain that? What do you mean? What kind of... Do you, know what, do you know what I mean? It's just things are said in this current environment, whether it's about Australia Day or flags or any other issue, nobody tests or questions or pressures to actually you know, confront some of this ideological nonsense with cold, hard facts. And I think that we're trying to turn, you know, the Queen Mary here in the waters of weird ideology, whether it's about the flag or, you know, gender identification or anything like that. We need to find our sensible centre again. Look, I, I really look forward to reading that column because, I mean, a country that loses its national identity is in real trouble. Now, I think the three of us know and have great faith in a lot of younger Australians. I mean, I've got two daughters in their mid-20s and uh, I have no doubt that they believe that, you know, Australia is a fantastic place uh, and they don't drag their country down and their young friends don't either. But there seems to be this push through, particularly from, you know, the, the verbose left that, ha that wants to push us away from being what we are proud of to something that I don't recognise, quite frankly. Well, I agree with you. And I think it's it's ingrained in children from, you know, early childhood now. There's been this grooming of our kids by this leftist, hateful um, 
group of people who've sort of inveigled themselves in just about every institution now. And it's really concerning because, because I believe the younger generation doesn't have the respect that we have and the pride that we have in our country. And, and it's no wonder there's so much mental anguish and illness amongst young people. They're not given any hope. They feel embarrassed to live here and be Australian, whereas we should be all so proud and contributing in a positive way, not a negative way. Gemma, I put it down to lack of leadership. I mean, you know, when Australia was was proud about its country, I mean, I, we can go back to, you know, go back to 1983, if you like, the America's Cup and Bob Hawke with his jacket on and spraying himself <laughs> with champagne. I mean, there was a great sense of national pride when it comes to Olympic Games. We, we are all proud Australians. Why do we suddenly have a burst of pride around things like sporting events and then yet during the rest of the year we get dragged down by this mob who think we should be ashamed of what we're doing in this country? That's a really great question, a really great question. And I'm fortunate enough to travel a little bit, not as much as many, but a little bit for work. And every time I come back to Australia, I thank my lucky stars that in 1956 my grandfather came out as a post-war economic migrant. I, I thank my lucky stars that they were brave enough to leave everything and everything they had, which was not much after the war, and everyone they knew to start a new life in this country. I, I think generationally I do think that there's been a gap. There's, the, you know, with the passing of years between the boomer generation, the poor maligned boomers, I think I'm probably a boomer in a Generation X's body, but that's another story altogether. But <laughs> in the passing of generations, there have been a loss of story and a loss of storytelling and a loss of gratitude uh, you know, passed down from generation to generation. I knew my grandfather, um, my, my grandpa Doug Blakely fought in Milne Bay and I knew my nonno Carlo was in the Italian resistance. I knew those things because they were part of our family narrative. But that's generations past now. And the kids who are, the kids we're talking about today, God bless them, their grandparents fought diabetes. They didn't fight fascism. So there's a very big difference and that manifests in the social zeitgeist that we're seeing playing out in front of us. Pru, um, it will come as no surprise to you that I, I like a drink every now and then. Uh, I note that next month uh, we're going to have another index increase in the alcohol tax. They're already taxing cigarettes out of existence. A, a pint of beer in Sydney is going to end up costing $14 uh, and you're going to pay $24 if you want to have a cocktail like a Negroni, which I'm sure Gemma's very partial to. Um, <laughs> These are sneaky taxes that hit average folk who just want to go out and have a nice night at the pub. Well, sadly, you know, this is the thing, but it's a very dangerous move that they're making because hitting people where it hurts, which is in the pub, with their beer, I think is a very dangerous move by any government. So I don't know if it's going to happen, Steve, but they are very revenue hungry, as we know. Love taxing everything. <laughs> How's um, a Negroni go down with you, uh, well, by the way, Gemma? They're not 24 bucks in Italy. I can give you the red hot tip. Look, very quickly, <laughs> and I've written, a, I've written about this in The Australian. My late father was an alcoholic, and I can tell you um, that raising the taxes on alcohol would not have saved his life, and I think these people are disconnected from okay. reality. We'll make sure we uh, read your column in The Australian tomorrow and mine in The uh, Herald Sun. Thank you very much, Prue and Gemma. Appreciate your time tonight.